We're here at the 3GP plenary in Lisbon, and I'm joined now by Balash Batenyi, who is the RAN chairman, and Eric Gutman, who is SA chairman, both of 3GPP. Balash, first of all, there's been a lot of progress on the radio aspect of 5G. You've released the first set of 5G NR standards this week. Can you explain to us what exactly that comprises? So this week is in the, indeed a historical achievement from 3GPP as a whole. We've released the non-standalone 5G radio specifications, which means that um, you need an LT anchor. Um, and besides the LT anchor, you have the 5G NR cell, but you basically do your control plane and control plane communication through LT, and then you boost the user data capacity with 5G NR and the new radio technology. So that is essentially what is um, coming out from this week's specifications. So this came early because of an requ industry requirement early this year to bring forward some of the work and, and, and get things into the market quicker. But you've still got another set of standards to do before release 15 is complete. Is that right? That is correct. So uh, the full schedule of release 15 calls for a completion in June. Uh, in June 2018, so we have another six months uh, to complete the full suite uh, of 5G specifications for release 15, and that will encompass the so-called standalone system, so that we'll not have to rely on the LT anymore for control plane communications, and it will have full control plane support for, for the new 5G radio. And Eric, radio is not the sole component of 5G, there's also the, the network as well. What progress has been made this week on the 5G system? The 5G system is, is being developed largely as a new 5G core network, and all the components of that network uh, are being uh, considered, um, both in terms of, of the functionality they will provide for the NR and, and other accesses, but also in interaction with uh, EPC and, and the entire 4G system. So we're going to have compatibility um, going forward uh, as, as people adopt the new technology. The new 5G system uh, features capabilities that will allow for orchestration and virtualization. Uh, in, uh, the components are, are redesigned to offer a, a very cleanly separated control plane and user plane. The, it adopts an, an internal signaling architecture that's, that's novel. So rather than, than following dis, distinct paths, uh, it's a service-based architecture, which will, though it, it supports all of the procedures and mechanisms that are needed to provide mobile telecommunications, these same capacities can be used for other services that can be uh, offered in innovative ways by operators in, in the future. Um, and... Uh, there's also the mechanism that we call network slicing, which will provide the uh, capabilities to reach service level agreements for groups of, of devices according to the goals that we have for supporting new businesses, new vertical industries. But that's, those, that's an overview. Uh, like in the past, uh, we're going to encompass with this one core network all of the different kinds of accesses that we now support, all the different radio technologies as well as non-3GP technologies. So how do you ensure cooperation and coordination between SA and RAN and the different parts of 3GPP? I, I think most of the coordination actually occurs uh, between the different working groups and between uh, the different actors. Many of the same companies are involved in, in each of the working groups in, in all the areas. And so there's coordination within companies, between companies, between working groups, and then at the level that we work at, which is the, the technical standards group, we identify from a program management perspective and in terms of the overall uh, goals of, of the system and of each component, we make sure that those are aligned and our goals uh, will produce the desired result. And Balash, how do you think we measure up to the earlier requirements and use cases that our operators put forward a few years ago when we first started talking about 5G? So I think what we have to recognize and realize is that uh, uh, to make 
the vision, the full 5G vision a reality. It takes time. It takes multiple phases. It takes multiple releases, just as it did with LTE. So the full 5G vision is really one with the multiple pillars that guides the overall system development for the next X number of years. But then if we look at the first drop that we just successfully uh, completed this week, um, that is primarily guided by the early adopters, the early um, deployment plans of operators in different regions. And those early deployment plans really call for a mobile broadband boost. So this is where the slight disconnect comes from, okay, 5G is wonderful, but the first release only provides mobile broadband. But I think what we have to re recognize is you cannot fulfill the full vision in one go. So you have to start somewhere. And you obviously want to start at an area and at a set of features that you can deploy. Otherwise, how would you gain experience with the new technology? So you really want to focus on those aspects, those features that are going to get deployed, well, maybe not tomorrow, but end of, end of next year, early 2019, so we can get experience with the new technology. And then, of course, we're going to continue working on additional features to fulfill the full vision. And Eric, you mentioned network slicing earlier. How far does 3GPP segment the, the network and, and look at slices at this stage? Are you just looking at the three major use cases of 5G, the broadband, low latency, and massive IoT? Actually, most of our activity is driven by specific verticals. So we have an active, uh, ongoing project in the area of broadcast technology and, and uh, vehicle technology uh, new broadcast support. And so these are, are vertical industries that we have been engaging with for some time, but this is intensifying in our, in our 5G efforts. And what we are seeing is that we have to take a much broader approach from a system level to achieve these ends. And uh, the, the notion of, of slice types that focus initially on massive IoT, uh, enhanced mobile broadband, ultra-reliable, low-latency communication, ensure that we are aimed at achieving these targets by the time we provide the IMT 2020 delivery. We're looking at these, however, specifically to deliver services with industries that, that are actively engaged, not only for by our standards, but they're actually coming and providing us uh, with guidance both at the requirements level, but, but actually engaged in many cases in doing the work itself of standardization to ensure that the outcome is successful and useful for them. Yeah, if I can just add to what Eric said, I think direct engagement from all those new verticals that we're really targeting with the full vision is very important. It has started, as Eric said, um, but at least I'm hoping that it's going to intensify more and more. We get you know, players for, from... Um, um, industries from um, autonomous driving, from all those different verticals that we really want to target with with our uh, with our technology, because that's really uh, that's what will really make five G a success. So we can't get, be constrained um, by the LT footprint. We have to go way beyond that. That's the only way we can make five G a success. And this has been something of a departure, hasn't it? The first time we really started talking to other industry groups outside of telecoms, what have you learned? What have been your experiences in working with some of these industries? What we see and what makes it difficult is many of the other industries really don't have a focal point for their technology and ecosystem development. Um, we are basically fortunate in, in the wireless industry that we both the standard side as well as the industry side has very good focused uh, forums with 3GPP for standards and for the industry side with the operators, DSMA, for example. So you know who to, who to go to. But with several of the vertical industries, such forums don't exist. So you either have to try to foster the creation of these, like with, with the automotive industry, 5G AA was really uh, created with, with that in mind, to, to have a forum like that for the automotive industry. Um, but many of the other verticals don't have this. Um, so it is it makes it difficult to really get those players engaged in the process and in the technology development. And this is something that SA is really focused on as well as Eric. Absolutely. Uh, and I think um, we see these fora 
emerging or coming to 3GBP in larger and larger numbers. Uh, industrial Automation Forum just uh, started a liaison relationship with us and more and more automotive initiatives, for example. Uh, so I, I think this aspect is, is very promising. I, I think it's, it's important to note that what we've achieved now in, in this, at this point, uh, with this preliminary release, and certainly by the time we reach June, um, are the foundations upon which we're going to build all of the 5G features in the future. And uh, this is the, the really uh, deeper significance of the work we're doing, not the specific features that we delivered now, but the fact that uh, as we continue, both NR and the 5G core network are going to uh, expand on the basis of the foundation that we've provided in, in the last year, basically, of, of intense work. And where, where does this leave LTE? I mean, is, is, is it a case that you're effectively rebranding LTE as, as, as part of 5G? Rebranding of LTE as 5G will certainly happen. I think we have seen that back in the 2008 arena when uh, you know certain uh, parts of the industry were rebranding HSPA and 3G as 4G. Um, I think we'll, we'll see that to some extent. Um, at the same time, we're also seeing the development of features that we started in NR, or in NR to trickle over to LTE. For example, high reliability uh, on the radio layer as well as lower latency, uh, which we're also developing for LTE. So there is uh, there's sort of a seamless, um, a seamless uh, relationship between the two technologies for the moment. Um, and we'll, of course, after a while, most of the new features will be focusing on NR. It's inevitable, but it's going to happen gradually, just like it did with the previous generational shift. I think we're, we're in very good shape for the months to come, and uh, it, it'll be an exciting challenge to, to get through both phase one and phase two of, of this uh, initial 5G process. And I'm very confident that we're going to achieve the the targets that we set out to for IMT 2020 and even exceed many of those goals. Great. Eric Bellach, thank you both very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.